Before I begin today's satsang, a few short spiritual quotes. This first batch is on the subject of consciousness. The universe is coming to know itself. You are an aperture through which the universe is looking at and exploring itself. That's a quote from Alan Watts. The cosmos is within us. We are made of star stuff. We are a way for the universe to know itself. Of course, recognizably, Carl Sagan. This is from the Adi Granth, the Sikh scriptures of India. Many millions are the skies and solar systems. Many millions are the moons, the suns, and stars. Many millions are the sources of creation and continents. Many millions are the jewel-containing oceans. Many times has the universal expanse occurred. The sound of God's voice said, Let there be light. A quote from the book of Genesis, Hebrew Bible. The universe was manifested out of divine sound. From it came into being the light. Said Shams of Tabriz, Rumi's spiritual teacher in the Sufi tradition. And finally, on the subject of consciousness, the universe coming to know itself, and sound, the mind of God, we believe, is cosmic music, the music of strings resonating through 11-dimensional hyperspace. Also a recognizable passage from Dr. Michio Kaku. A few short quotes on the subject of love being the only reality. For small creatures such as we, the vastness is bearable only through love. Carl Sagan We said at the beginning of this discussion that mysticism is the art of union with reality. That it is, above all else, a science of love. A quote from Evelyn Underhill, the famous author of many books on the subject of mysticism, specifically in this case from the book The Luminous Within, Practical Mysticism. This quote comes from Baba Devi Sahib of Moradabad. We should understand that love or bhakti is the life or soul of the entire universe. This spiritual path and its destination is divine love. God and love are one and the same thing. This is from Kripal Singh. God is love. Each soul is a drop from the divine ocean, the ocean of love. And the way back to God is also through love. And finally, on the subject of love being the only reality. This is a poem by Hafez from the Sufi tradition on love as well as the zikr, the guru mantra or simran, also known as the prayer of the name. The only life raft here is love and the name. Say it, brother. Oh, say the divine name, dear sister, silently as you walk. Don't die again with that holy ruby mine inside, still unclaimed, says Hafez. Three masters that have fed my soul spiritually. Not a complete list, but a list of 
masters in recent years and as of late. These three represent three great branches of Sant Mat, the path of the masters. One, the Sawan Kirpal line of masters, Hazur Baba Sawan Singh, Kirpal Singh, Baba Somanath. The second branch, Agra Radha Swami, the lineage of Swamiji Maharaj and Hazur Maharaj Rai Salagram Bahadur. And three, the Sant Tulsi Sahib Maharishi Mehi lineage of Sant Sat Gurus. What's the use of receiving this human form if we do not serve others in thought, word, and deed? If we hold our thoughts only on worldly material things and refuse to think of that which is higher and more subtle, then our faith in the transcendental will inevitably diminish. A quote from Swami Sant Sebiji Maharaj. In the booklet, Quintessence of Yoga, The Secret of All Success, published by Maharishi Mehi Ashram. Welcome to the Sant Mat Satsang Podcast, a production of Spiritual Awakening Radio. This is a satsang without walls, a place of much poetry and prose, words of light and love from various spiritual masters, spiritual classics or scriptures. Enjoy all of the readings today. May they provide you with some helpful satsang material wherever you are in the world, near or far, and lead to a further in-depth exploration of the teachings of the masters, including from lesser known or newly translated material you may not have encountered before in English. Note the usage of the term Santmat. Santmat means the teachings or mat of the saints or sages, the saints. It's also translated sometimes as the path of the masters. In India, it's common knowledge that the term Santmat was coined or adapted by Param Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras during the 19th century. Santmat was adopted and popularized as a term by Tulsi Sahib as a kind of new name for this spiritual path or genre of mysticism, but the Sant tradition with its many guru lineages or branches is a spiritual movement that dates back many centuries to ancient India. Like Galileo discovering new worlds through the lens of his telescope, mystics have been trying to tell humanity for eons of something quite similar. The reason why the contemplative state of being is still hidden from most of us is that unlike Galileo's telescope, in order to look through this particular lens, the third eye or inner vision, we mustn't focus on the outward sensory impressions, but go in the opposite direction, into inner space. Look through the lens of the third eye to access the world of within. Tune the inner radio dial, listening for the subtle inner sounds coming from beyond the silence. This is how to access the kingdom of the heavens, the inner space within you. The spiritual path is all about this transformation. Beyond a certain point, when we've gone as far as we can go on our own, at trying to figure out the mysteries of reality and the cosmos. Inspiration can come from others we trust. The deluxe version of this mentoring process for a few of us comes from a living, enlightened tradition of spiritual masters. Three masters that have fed my soul spiritually today on the Sant Mat. Satsang Podcast. Welcome. Baba Ram Singh. 
Sant Ram Singh Ji Maharaj, or Baba Ji as he is known to his followers, currently earns his living farming at his ashram in southern India. After many years of dedicated meditation and devotion, initially with guidance from his master Baba Somanath Ji Maharaj, and later with the guidance in the form of Sant Ajayb Singh Ji Maharaj, he achieved perfection in the practice of Surat Shabad. He was subsequently instructed by these two great masters from within and outwardly to give satsangs and initiate devoted souls, those committed to a lacto-vegetarian diet and abstinence from all intoxicants into the practice of shabd through connection to the inner light and sound principles of Surat Shabad Yoga. Email me for a link to the complete biography of Baba Ram Singh Ji, as well as to the collection of his satsang discourses that have been translated into English and made available online. My email address is james at spiritualawakeningradio.com. Baba Ram Singh. If we listen to satsang every day, and we do bhajan, simran every day, then we will definitely get success on this path, and we will be fit for receiving the grace of our masters. Bhajan Simran, this of course refers to hearing the inner sound in meditation, practicing Simran, the repetition of the Guru Mantra, the names, in this case the five names revealed at the time of one's initiation. And so here he is referring to meditation practice, as well as listening to the teachings of the masters every day. If we listen to satsang every day, and we do Bhajan Simran every day, then we will definitely get success on this path and we will be fit for receiving the grace of our masters. This is a satsang discourse of Baba Ram Singh Ji titled, Give Priority to Your Meditation. The path of Santmat is the path of love and affection. Mahatmas have been explaining that the soul is a form of love and the Master is also a form of love. God Almighty Himself is a form of love, and the path of going back to God Almighty is also a form of love. But ever since the soul has separated from God Almighty and has got engulfed in the net of Kal and Maya, the Lord of Death and Time and Illusion, it has separated from God Almighty and has manifested itself in the form of Kal and Maya here. So that same love which is manifested in the outward pursuits of Kal and Maya here in the physical world, if we are able to inwardly direct that same love and affection, then we can move within at great speed and velocity. Therefore, our love and affection have to be prioritized, and oftentimes we prioritize all of the other things, all of our mundane activities and other things. And because we have a love and affection for those things, we prioritize those and we say, okay, after we have finished all of those activities, we will sit for meditation. And then sometimes we sit for meditation Sometimes we do not sit for meditation, and that's how our meditation gets affected. So if you have love and affection for your master, then you will prioritize that love and affection for giving priority to your meditation first. It is therefore incumbent on a disciple, once he has been initiated, to prioritize his meditation. He should always keep that to the forefront and do his meditation first, and then all of the other activities should follow that. And why do we do this meditation? It is so we get free from this ocean of life and death, and we rid ourselves from this illness of life and death. And that is the technique, that is the trick. 
that the Master has taught us that is what we should do, and do it with a priority. Another discourse by Baba Ram Singh, titled, Coming to Know How Precious Our Human Life Is. Saints have adopted three measures for salvation, satsang, surrender to the masters, and siva. I'm just going to pause and define these terms. Satsang is association with the eternal truth. Song means association. Sat refers to the supreme being, also called the eternal truth. Satsang. Surrender to the masters, that's receiving guidance from a living spiritual master. On the mysteries, uh, about the mysteries of the kingdom of the heavens. Spiritual practice, living a life of love, a spiritual way of life. And Siva, that refers to selfless service or mission in life. Saints have adopted three measures for salvation. Satsang, surrender to the masters, and Seva or Siva. When we go to Satsang, we come to know what is reality and otherwise. We are awakened in the satsang. In the satsang, saints do not talk and explain the scriptures and Vedas and Puranas. They simply tell us about the history of our own soul. They explain how the soul has come from God Almighty and coming into this world, how it has got entangled in Maya and Kal and how it has to get free from the bondage of Kal and Maya and go back to its true home and to its true father. So this reality is revealed to us in satsang and we come to know of that. And once we understand that and we imbibe that, then we try to work towards getting out of this. We get cautioned and we get awakened in satsang. We come to know how precious our human life is and we come to know how many treasures God Almighty has kept in our body, within our body, and how we have to go within. So when we come to know all of this, then we surrender to the Masters, and then the Master takes over our responsibility, and he initiates us. So then he explains in the initiation how we have to go back, and what are the practices we have to do. Now, once that is done, it is our duty to follow those practices and do what has been told to us by our Master. The third measure is seva, or selfless service. So, once we have listened to the satsang, we have gone to the Master. One important vice is we all have ego. We have our egos with us, and when we go to the Masters, when we go to the ashram, we do seva there. And that siva or seva is given to us so that we shed our ego. It is this very ego that makes us come again and again into the world and makes us take rounds in these 8.4 million life forms. So this ego then gets vanquished by satsang, by practice of dhyan and simran, meditation and simran and seva. And once when we go within, we realize that all of this is being done by someone else. It is not we who have done all this. The someone else, that's capitalized. Someone, capital S, else, capital E. So we should do all of these repeatedly every day. We should sit for satsang every day, and we should do our Simran and Dion Bhajan every day because these things are our true work, which we have to do for ourselves. Everything else that we do throughout the day is work for someone else. Therefore, we should not ignore this. We should do our meditation. We should do our Simran and Dhyan, Bhajan, every day. Every day in our timetable, we should make sure that we set our priority of doing this first thing in the morning and then all other work should follow after we set aside this time for meditation, dhyan, bhajan. Simran is the repetition of sacred names of God. Dhyan or meditation 
focusing on the third eye center, going within, contemplating the divine light and radiant form of the Master. And bhajan refers to meditation upon and absorption in the divine sound, Surat Shabad Yoga. That was another discourse by Baba Ram Singh. Coming up next, another master. As today we explore three masters, the teachings of three masters that have fed my soul spiritually. Dayal Sahib, or Dr. Agam Saran Sahab of the Dayal Puri Radhaswami Satsang, born in 1930, passed on in 1999. He was the seventh and last guru in the Dayal Puri lineage, the Dayal Puri Radhaswami Satsang. Dayal Sahib was one of the great prolific writers of the Radhaswami faith with a treasure trove of material translated into English, no less, available at the radhaswamidayal.net website. And I've compiled that material that have, has been translated into English into a document called A Spiritual Seeker's Guide. For more information on Dayal Sahib and the Dayal Puri lineage, as well as information on A Spiritual Seeker's Guide, this great treasure trove of Radhaswami uh, writings, Radhaswami writings in the English language, email me and I can send you a link to both the website as well as the online book. My email address is james at spiritualawakeningradio.com. Readings from A Spiritual Seeker's Guide, the satsang material translated into English, the teachings of Dayal Sahib of the Dayal Puri Radhaswami satsang. So long as you do not experience the withdrawal of spirit within you during meditation, the spiritual path is a myth for you. To attain this experience, you have to perform the spiritual practices with full zest and fervor every day as prescribed by a living master. The seeker after truth in search of truth visits many places, but after finding those places to be completely devoid of any worth, he sees the world as devoid of charm and dry. When he finds the true master, he feels like a hungry man when he gets food, and a thirsty person when he finally receives water. Looking at his limited resources, the Supreme Father comes down on this planet and awakens the unlimited potentialities inherent in man. Man possesses the atom of spirit, which has unlimited powers. Unfortunately, there are very heavy coverings over it. Man is unaware of this potential power. The Supreme Father sends saints and seers for those who yearn for awakening this power. The moment such an individual comes in contact with messengers of God, his spirit power is ignited. With little effort from his side and with the help of the Master, he is able to cast aside the coverings over his soul. As the coverings go off, he feels lightness and develops power of penetration into the past and future. When all the coverings are thrown off, he becomes one with the Supreme Father. There is no difference between him and the Supreme Father. Attainment of this state is real freedom, salvation, jiva mukti. Another passage from A Spiritual Seeker's Guide. When man realizes that his life will not be free from sorrow, disaster, and troubles without sat karni, genuine spiritual endeavors, and that his life will be unhappy without knowing the secret of emancipation, then only will he be very keen to know the key to truth. 
He will not rest until he knows the path to truth. He is conversant with the anomalies and bankruptcy of religions which are prevalent now and knows that truth cannot be attained by those outdated methods. Such a person gets contact with true association, satsang or association with a living master, sooner or later. He views the true association, the satsang, as a vehicle which lifts one from this burning world to a very cool and peaceful place. Another passage, merely attending satsang, listening to holy hymns and eating prashad are ineffective if the resolve to achieve the highest aim in life realization of the ultimate truth, redemption from the cycle of birth and death, is absent in your life. Remind turbulent mind about this again and again. Life without spirituality is meaningless. Life becomes meaningful only with param, paramatha or spirituality. Whatever may be your status in society and the family, there is no alternative to repetition of the holy name and contemplation of the holy form. This will bring about the necessary preparation for spirituality in you. New Horizons of Spirituality The spiritual practice adopted in Sant Mat is very subtle. It requires much wisdom and concentration. Very few people enter this path, and very few people adopt its practice. People join this faith for some show or for, for some gain and are deprived of its enormous benefits. Ordinary persons cannot reap the full benefit of Sant as so few have a real desire for the search for truth. This creation has been under the sway of Kal for many ages. Good jivas or souls are very few. Even though Sant Mat is there and the Sat Guru has manifested, there are some impediments. To practice Sant Mat requires right attitude and approach. The person who does not see the destructive nature of this universe will not become detached from it. Even though he adopts spiritual life, he will be wavering and wandering. The gates of Sant Mat are always open so that souls may acquire noble samskaras or impressions through satsang, service, and sacrifice. A word about Kal Naringen before I move on to the next quote. Kal Naringen, the lord of, of illusion, the demiurge, a kind of false or lower god, or a collective universal mind, which is a level of uh, power in the cosmos, if you will, a kind of lesser God, if you will. A God that is limited, is not all-knowing, that cannot go beyond its level, the mental plane. So therefore it is a kind of cosmic ego, or limited lesser God of the cosmos. And mind is part of that. Thoughts are limited. One has to go beyond mind, beyond thought, beyond the mental body. Indeed, beyond the universal mind as well. Sant Mat is a path of pneuma, or spirit. Beyond the material plane, beyond the mental plane. When we use the word mind in Sant Mat, it's not capitalized, because we don't regard it as the highest level of divinity. The goal is to go beyond the material realms, astral plane, causal plane, and the mental plane as well, to transcend body and mind, to rise above body consciousness, to rise above astral consciousness, to rise above mind and ego, and reside in spirit, spirit and truth, the goal of this path. Another passage from A Spiritual Seeker's Guide. To find a Satguru is itself a very rare and precious experience. 
Are you able to realize this? You should bring in a change in your outlook and practice. You should experience the truth of spirituality in your life. You have to do the internal practice sincerely. If anyone is lagging behind in this preparation and practice, he will come under elimination process. You should be alert always. Be true to yourself. Give proper place to satkarni, true spiritual endeavors in your life. Do not turn away from it. If there is lull in the practice, service, and sacrifice, and grace all become useless, regular spiritual practice is fundamental. All other things are only aids and helpers. Without doing the practices of Simran, the remembrance of God by the repetition of his name, and Dion, meditation upon the form of the Satguru and inner light, the hold of karmas, past and present, on the mind will not be loosened, and therefore the mind will always be wavering with thoughts. The Lord is bountiful. Your entire life must revolve around him. Subject yourself to this way of life. There is no room for dejection. With firm faith in the divine hand, you should aspire for truth. You will realize the Creator within you. God helps those who realize their own limitations and pine or yearn for the ultimate truth in all humility. To be aware of one's own faults and sincerely pray for their correction is a sign of grace of the Supreme Being, and this is the only method by which the heart is purified. Give more and more place to it in your life. Do Simran and Dion as much as possible. The more you do the repetition of the name and contemplation of the form, Simran and Dion, the more will be your progress. Spirituality needs sincerity. Without it, truth will not be revealed and success is not achieved. Till all souls are emancipated, the human frame becomes blessed when the Supreme Father descends in it. Such a person enjoys the highest bliss. Param Guru Swamiji Maharaj was pleased to ordain that the supreme current would continue to remain in this world in human form so long as the entire creation is not redeemed. Unquote. Another passage from A Spiritual Seeker's Guide that very much sounds like the spirit of Bodhisattva. You know, till all beings are liberated, this path goes on. Those are some passages from Dayal Sahib of the Dayal Puri Radhaswami Satsang. A note about Simran, the power of repeating God's name or names. Repeating a name or sacred names of God with love and devotion, called in the East Simran, Manas Jap, referring to mental repetition, a mental chant done within one's mind, or Zikr, is one of the key spiritual exercises used to cultivate love for God and to invoke the positive power in our daily lives, making it possible to live a life of love. Simran is a mental repetition, Manas Jap, of a name of God done during meditation, and the spiritual practice of Simran is also done during available moments throughout the day and evening as a way to refocus, to recenter, to remember God all the time. Says Sant Tukarama of Maharashtra, Such is God's name that it heals the disease of the world. Whoever repeats the Lord's name while engaged in earthly duties remains ever in a blissful state of divine communion. One absorbed in the Lord's name, O Tuka, has truly attained liberation while living. This spiritual exercise of repeating God's name helps to uplift our day, 
to bring some of the heaven and bliss of meditation into our down-to-earth daily experience, and as a way to remember in a world of forgetfulness, to remain awake in a world of spiritual slumber, to abide in truth no longer dominated by forces of illusion. Be who you really are, wherever you go. And on this path of Santmat, where there is much talk of hours and hours spent in meditation, make your whole day a meditation through the repetition of Simran. Three masters that have fed my soul spiritually. Master number three, Swami Sant Seviji Maharaj. Born December 20th, 1920. Passed on June 4th, 2007, a date I know very well. Maharishi Sant Seviji Maharaj was a renowned saint, an exceptional spiritual guide and a unique social reformer of the 20th and 21st century. Sri Sant Seviji was the fourth guru in the Sant Mat lineage of great spiritual masters like Sant Tulsi Sahib, Baba Devi Sahib of Moradabad, and Maharishi Mehi Paramahans. Sri Sant Seviji was born December 20th, 1920 in a small village of Bihar district, India, the most impoverished state of India. His regular name, his earthly name, family name, was Mahavira. Indeed, that part of India has a lot of Jains. In fact, after learning that, I did a major study of Jainism, finding lots of great wisdom, scriptures, ahimsa, ethical principles, and even references to divine sound in the scriptures of Jainism. That was a fun excursion into the teachings of Jainism and Jain scriptures after learning that Sant Seviji's family name was Mahavira. Back to the biography of Swami Sant Seviji. In 1939, Mahavira came in contact with the great sage of the Sant Mat tradition, Maharishi Mehi, who had a hermitage in Bhagalpur, Bihar. Upon seeing Maharishi Mehi, Mahavira felt drawn to him as though he had known him for many lifetimes. Mahavira was so greatly intrigued by the principles and practices of Santmat, he approached Sri Maharishi Mehi for initiation in Santmat. Maharishi Mehi soon became very impressed by the sincerity and devotion of this young man and agreed to initiate him. In the heart of Mahavira, a keen desire arose to remain permanently in service to his guru. His desire was fulfilled in 1949 when Maharishi Mehi gave him permission to stay in the ashram in his service. Mahavira adopted, or devoted rather, his days and nights to taking care of the needs of his guru, thereby following the ancient Vedic model of the guru-disciple relationship. As Maharishi Mehi advanced in age, he began to transfer his responsibilities to Sri Sant Seviji. He authorized Sri Sant Seviji to give initiation to spiritual seekers, to respond to their inquiries, and to guide them through the inner experiences of their spiritual journeys. He came to be seen as the prominent disciple among Maharishi Mehi's chief devotees. For the complete biography of Swami Sant Seviji Maharaj, email me and request a link to the biography of Swami Sant Seviji, the great scholar, Sant of Sant Mat. Also request a link to his book, his major great work, or magnum opus, known as The Harmony of All Religions, exploring the inner light and sound meditation to be found in the great world religions, schools of mystics, and Sant Mat tradition, translated into English by Professor Vina Howard. That book is online. 
Email me and I can send you a link to the Harmony of All Religions book, as well as the biography of Swami Sant Seviji Maharaj. My email address is james at spiritualawakeningradio.com. Swami Sant Seviji, the untrained mind desires the delights of sense objects, so it persuades the senses and then the sense organs become active in pursuing those desires. Whatever the mind desires, the sense organs follow the lead of the mind. Once again, the mind. Swami Sant Seviji. It is essential to practice formless meditation, emptiness, in order to fully restrain the mind. Without this practice, it will not be possible to stay in the realm of pure consciousness. There are various sequential stages of dhyana or meditation. First, there is the meditation of a physical form, either of a satguru or any representation of the divine, of divinity, one's beloved goal or isht. Next, there is meditation on the formless, subtle form, bindu, the infinitesimally small point. The focus on bindu, infinitesimally small point, leading to the inner light at the third eye center, the yoga of light, is followed by the meditation on the inner sound, the surat shabd yoga, or shabad. Finally, there is meditation beyond any sound or form, the subtlest, unqualified form of the divine, the yoga of soundlessness, beyond the light and sound. These are the increasingly more and more subtle stages of meditation. In this way, we undertake sequential steps to accomplish complete focus, leading to the ultimate realization or samadhi absorption in meditation. When we sit and begin meditation, we meditate on the physical form, visualizing the form of the master with eyes closed, Dion. Why? Just as a child begins writing with big letters and then gradually smaller and finer letters, we also accomplish the preliminary stages of meditation on the physical or material forms and sounds before we are able to proceed to the more subtle forms of meditation. Persistent practice brings success in the objective. Some wise person has said, by practicing intense focus diligently, even the dull mind shines and becomes sharp, just as a rope when rubbed against a stone will eventually leave a mark even on the stone. So the mind brought under control through repeated effort. Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, O Arjuna, this mind is controlled through constant practice and detachment to worldly desires. More on the essentials of meditation according to Swami Sant Seviji Maharaj. One should practice meditation and strive for maintaining the state of detachment as well. What is dhyana? What is meditation? It is a state of ridding the mind of its constant mental deliberations and thereby attaining of tranquility. Dhyana is complete focus of the mind, allowing no other thoughts. The practice of Sant Mat meditation. Begin meditation with internally chanting or repeating the Guru Mantra and then try to visualize the radiant form or image of the Satguru in the still darkness of the inner sky with eyes closed. Follow that with focusing your attention at the seat of the soul within, i.e. at the third eye or the inner eye, by making the two streams of consciousness in your two eyes converge at a point. When the two currents of consciousness meet at a point, divine light appears within. Then practice Surit Shabad Yoga, the yoga of divine sound, 
i.e., try to shift your attention to listening to the divine sounds or myriads of melodies, Anhad Nad, Anhad Shabad, ringing inside. Listening to the divine sound destroys all the perversions, agitations, and fecalness of the mind. Ascending beyond or transcending the multitude of sounds, try to identify and tune into the quintessential unstruck melody, referred to as Sar Shabd or Anhat Nad, which alone is capable of taking you and merging you into oneness with the Supreme Lord. This is the ultimate deliverance, emancipation, or liberation. Those are some couplets of Swami Sant Seviji. On Sant Mat meditation practice, going from lower to higher, from outer to inner, from less subtle to more subtle. Swami Sant Seviji Maharaj from the book Harmony of All Religions, from the chapter on Jainism. Once established in the light, the practitioner hears various types of sweet inner melodies, the inner sounds. The saints have named the sound Anhad or unstruck divine sound. Through the technique of Shabad Yoga, inner sound meditation, the practitioner goes beyond these sounds and enters the eternal sound. Through this, the practitioner reaches the Supreme Being, God, the Supreme Spirit, and reaches the point where the distinction between the devotee or practitioner and God, the object of worship, disappears. The soul which is united with the Supreme Soul becomes the Supreme Soul. This state is known as moksha, nirvana, or mukti, absolute freedom. Another passage from Swami Sant Seviji. By practicing devotion through these four techniques, manas jap, the simran, the mantras, the zikr of sacred names, recitation of the divine name, in other words, manas dhyana, focus on the divine form, dristi sadhana, focus on the infinitesimal point, the third eye center, and inner light. And Nada Sadhana, the Surat Shabad Yoga, concentration on the inner divine sounds or transcendental hearing. The practitioner consecutively transcends the realms of darkness, light, and sound which cloak or veil the supreme truth, the divine reality. The light and sound veils the Supreme Being. And so, by transcending the light and sound, we reach the Supreme Being that is beyond the light and beyond the sound in that infinite eternal state. Referred to by some as the ocean of love, that's my favorite metaphor. The metaphor from that sacred text of the Kabir tradition known as the Anurag Sagar, which when translated into English means ocean of love. We are souls, we are drops from the divine ocean, the ocean of love. That's where we're from. That's where we still are if we did but know it, if we were not blind to that covered up, hidden reality. And through meditation practice, it becomes uncovered. Again, we find our true nature and true state and return back to the ocean of love. The drop of the soul merges back into the divine ocean of all consciousness, the Anurag Sagar, the ocean of love. Thank you for joining me today for the Sant Mat Satsang podcast focused on three masters that have fed my soul. 
spiritually. In conclusion, a reading from the Hindu Upanishads. On this ever-revolving wheel of life, the individual self goes round and round through life after life, believing itself to be a separate creature until it sees its identity with the Lord of love and attains immortality in the indivisible whole. A passage from the Upanishads. So the time is good. We should make use of this time. Close our eyes and sit for our Simran and Dion. Sit for our Simran and meditation. <laughs> 